Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Democracy 3. We are of course playing as the UK and things are going pretty well, I suppose. Yeah, I think they're probably they're good well, they're going alright. Put it that way. Uh, we do have a couple of problems, but we also have a lot of stuff going for us, which is really, really nice. One of uh, one of our major problems is uh, is the average temperature, which is uh, which is affecting uh, the food price, the cyclones, and the water shortage. It's increasing them all, and uh, and it's not good. There's nothing really we can do about it, though, so unfortunately, that looks like it's here to stay. Uh, the cyclones are... Yeah, they're... They're terrible. They're pretty much caused exclusively... Well, they are caused exclusively by the average temperature. And uh, and, and they change a whole lot of stuff. They, they affect all of this stuff, they make environmentalists annoyed with us, they make farmers annoyed with us, decreases farmers income and decreases the farmers membership. Uh, you know, but overall that's 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 okay, that's that's a problem that we can deal with, but we do have a lot of stuff going for us. We've got five green bubbles here and uh, and yeah, there's nothing too much to complain about actually. Um, so what are we going to do in this episode? Well, first we want to go over our uh, our financial situation. And our financial situation is it's pretty good actually. Like we might be in a little bit of a budget deficit at the moment, but overall, I don't think we're uh, we're in too much finish. We're in too much trouble, um, because and I'll tell you why. We're about to start seriously scaling back investment in uh, in, for example, state housing. Now we're gonna we're gonna scale this right back to. Well, we're probably gonna scale it back to none actually. Uh, that's gonna make capitalists less unhappy with us it's gonna decrease the amount of uh, the, the poor are happy with us it's gonna decrease the quality by a bit uh, but at the same time it is gonna give a massive boost to private housing so hopefully hopefully we will uh, we will see a boost in private housing uh, we're gonna do the same thing probably with education and we're gonna do that because well probably not not healthcare at the moment we're gonna do it with education because I believe that you know Private education. Uh, this is this is not private education. What am I on about? Uh, education is here. Uh, education is is pretty good, and it it's going to continue to flourish. So we can we can do our bit by by sort of cutting back investment in state schools and allowing that that private school um, that private school size to flourish because GDP is so large at the moment that there is there is really an appetite for for private schools. Okay, so I think we could probably scale this right the way back. It's gonna it's gonna increase unemployment a little bit. So maybe we only scale it back to Yeah, we scale it back in, in bits. Let's scale it back to here. And that'll that'll double Yeah, okay, so it's not gonna it's not gonna keep unemployment down. However, uh, I still think it's important that we do this. I mean, we don't have to be funding this at a time of of, of vast economic prosperity. So uh, so we are going to cut that back. Okay, good. What else are we going to cut back on? Well, pensions actually. Private pensions are uh, are are growing uh, with GDP. State pensions, however, state pensions can come right back, and we will. I know we can't do it this th this turn even, should I say? Um, but we will next turn. We will cut that all the way back. Uh, that is not going to reduce poverty as much as it should, but at the same time, it's going to cost us an awful lot less. So let's uh, let's go to the next turn. And by the way, I would just like to point out that we are we are good for money. We're probably good for the game, if I'm honest. But uh, but you know, it's it's a matter of principle, I think. Okay, so we are running a budget surplus of 44 billion. That's pretty much thanks to uh, to cutting two two major of two two of our major expenses. Uh, state pensions are going. State healthcare service is uh, is going as well. Eventually, uh, military spending. We're gonna keep. We're gonna keep spending on military spending. I think that's important. Um, and state schools. We can cut further once we're uh, once we're in a happy position. Um, how are we gonna get that unemployment up though? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, equality is gonna take a bit of a nosedive. Yep. Yeah, we knew that would happen. Uh, but you know, that's just the way things are. I'm afraid. Okay. Private pensions. This doesn't affect equality directly, so hopefully we shouldn't see equality fall any further. We might, um, and I wouldn't be be too concerned to be honest. Okay, so that's uh, that's pretty much how we're gonna do it. We're gonna scale that all the way back, and once again, we'll be making an absolute ton of money. Now, how I plan to uh, to spend this money, I have. 
a couple of ideas actually. I think we could probably start scaling back this flat income tax because this would uh, would allow us to get uh, to get well. It would increase our equality actually, which would be which would be pretty good because it would offset the uh, the it would offset the reductions in pension spending and all that stuff. So we would we would probably be a more equal country. But also uh, it would it would uh, would not not affect poor earnings as much obviously you know all these all these things are sort of good for us and people will like us a lot more not like it actually matters because let's face it we're pretty darn popular already but uh, but you know hey ho it's 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 something that we've got to do and i think we, we probably will do uh, we're gonna allow agencies to operate this time i think uh, socialists ain't too keen on us no i didn't think so uh, the flat income tax which they are annoyed about us for is gonna get cut as well so that's gonna be fine Okay, what are you? You're tired of serving in government. Minister for Industry. Hmm, oh well. Uh, poverty is, is increasing rapidly. Yeah. Poverty is increasing rapidly, so... Uh, we've, got, we've got to do something, but we can't really do anything about this food crisis. There's really nothing we can do. Food stamps are maxed out. Absolute maxed out. Ugh, there's really very little we can actually do. Uh, we have a budget surplus of 92.88 billion. That's crazy good. That is really, really good. Uh, whistleblower, prosecute... I don't, it doesn't really matter at this point in the game anyway, does it? No, it, it doesn't. Water shortage, that's not going to go away. Let's let's face it, this is never, ever going to go away. The environment, though, the environment, though, is still taking a dive. What can we do? Is there any other transport policies that we can introduce that will... that will make the environment better? Biofuel subsidies? No, not really. Um, there's not really that much we can do. Bicycle subsidies, but nobody likes bicycle subsidies. Ah, uh, it's yeah, anti-gravity stuff. Might as well. Yeah, we could up that a little bit, I suppose. It's going to cost thirteen billion. But I think it's a bit more of a fun policy than an actual... It's actually one that's going to save us. Um, you know, something about this game is that, you know, in the late game, anyway, there's really not that much flexibility. I mean, you always develop the same sort of problems. I mean, obviously, we're we're quite lucky that we've got pollution because it means our GDP is so good um, that it's affecting our environment. But, you know, stuff such as cyclones, the, the water shortage, and to some extent, the food crisis are all very, very linked in with uh, with the average temperature going up. And the average temperature going up is something that we that we can't do anything about. Uh, I know we elected not to cut not to cut our CO two emissions, but but that wouldn't have mattered. I mean it might have given us an extra what? An extra hour of gameplay, but or of of not having a, a water shortage in cyclones, but it wouldn't have actually, you know, postponed it indefinitely. So, you know, we, we took the economic benefits and we ran with it. Uh, now, I'm not saying that that's a good thing to do. I mean, especially companies today, they're, uh, them doing that will uh, will obviously lead to, to bad consequences in the future. But at the same time, it would it would inevitably end up like this. So, uh, so that's something that's not too great. What is our budget surplus at the moment? Okay, so we did massively cut our expenditure, and that is good. That is really good for us. Uh, obviously, we should we should see reserves increase and I think that probably when we get to 3,000 billion then we will probably start to see a rather different spending plan we might spend a heck of a lot more um, but I sort of you know that 3,000 billion mark is uh, is quite substantial so we're gonna go for that that's uh, that's the goal for now and in the meantime we sort of need to mitigate all these problems and how we're gonna do that I have no idea uh, our our policy our policy sort of selection is rather rather small to be honest um pollution controls we could try and introduce that that might do something but i doubt it um it is going to reduce gdp though so we don't really want to do that but i think at the same time our gdp can handle it 5.95 percent i think we can handle that uh, obviously, that's going to do nothing, but I think as a matter of principle, it's important that we try and reduce our CO2 emissions now, even though the world is, is beyond disrepair, in my opinion, uh, with this water shortage and these cyclones and this pollution and stuff. Yeah, there's not much we can do. The environment is just so bad. 
GDP is just absolutely killing the environment. Absolutely killing it. And there's and there's really not much we can we can actually do for the environment that'll help it. Um, well, what can we do? Cycling campaign that's not very popular. New car subsidies that's not really what we want. Subsidized school buses, bus issues will go up. Uh, parents will be happy with us. Let's do it. It's going to cost a little bit of money, but I think it's worth it. And uh, and yeah, let's go to the next turn. Okay. Real estate bubble has developed. Wow. Okay, well, that's uh, that's an interesting one. That's a, that's a very interesting one. Immigration. How do we get immigration down? Well, quite honestly, we can't. We, we, we just can't. Um, it's just it's just proving to be very, very challenging indeed. Uh, we're running a budget surplus. Health is going to go down a little bit. Wow. Wow, it's gone down a lot. That is substantially down. Well, there's nothing we can really do about that. Nothing we can really do about that at all. Uh, we're still running a budget surplus, a massive budget surplus at that, so that is nice. That is a good thing. Okay, what are we going to do? Well, uh, well... Drone Strike Act. What is this? Like, I've never introduced this before, I don't think. Might have. Not entirely sure. Let's let's try and introduce that. Yeah, foreign relations, boost that up. Uh, because obviously, you know, global trade is, is something that, or international trade is something that we actually quite value here. So uh, it, it does keep the food price down, or, or tries to anyway. I mean, it's obviously a ridiculously high anyway, but I don't think there's anything we can really do about that, to be honest. Um, yeah. Food crisis is, is way too, way too bad. We don't really want to be doing that. Uh, import tariffs, we could, we could introduce that, but I don't really think we need to. We don't really need the money. Economy, anything else that we could conceivably do. There's not much, to be honest. Airline tax, airline tax, that would reduce... Uh, CO2 emissions, but I don't think we really, really need that to be honest. Health tax credits. I think this is probably what we're going to introduce, and school tax credits. We're probably going to introduce both of these, um, and I think that's that's probably the way that we can we can justify cutting back hugely uh, healthcare spending. School tax credits, I think, are probably going to be the first to to be introduced. Private schools, yeah, okay, so socialists are not going to like us, poor people aren't going to like us. You know, at this, at, this, at this stage in the game, we're sort of just playing around with policies to see, you know, what's, what suits us, what's, uh, what, what's good for the country, because there is, there is no point in paying a ridiculous amount of money for... Uh, wow, looks like those pollution controls did actually have a little bit of an effect. Uh, well, that's a little bit worrying. A little bit worrying indeed. Um, I think probably we should pursue policies that the liberals like. Uh, this was mentioned in one of the comments actually, so we are probably gonna 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 go down the the liberalized path eventually. Um, but but perhaps not this episode. Perhaps not this episode. I'm not I'm not feeling very liberal today. Um, obviously, if we if we were liberal, then then you know we would be introducing stuff such as um, where is it? Where is it? Um, here we go. Yeah, such as prostitution um, legalization and, you know, gambling perhaps would be introduced and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, stuff that's more liberal than conservative, um, you know, at the moment. We're almost at the end of the episode, so we're probably going to do that next time. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, if you've enjoyed, then please remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.